And this is going to be the final test that we do on our sample of water. As you can see, we're almost out. This is going to be the carbon dioxide. Now, the other two tests are alkalinity and acidity. And in our previous experiments, neither test indicated that the water was either alkaline or acidic in any form. So we're not going to be doing those experiments. We are going to do the carbon dioxide because if you are in, interested in water quality, carbon dioxide is very important. <clears throat> According to the information, certain carbon dioxide levels are required in nature and in man's environment. Generally, lakes and rivers contain less than 10 milligrams per liter of carbon dioxide. However, stagnant or polluted water can generate large amounts due to organic and mineral decomposition. These results can make the water corrosive and toxic to aquatic life forms like fish. The monitoring of carbon dioxide is also critical in the man-made environment. A certain amount of carbon dioxide is reintroduced into potable water during the final stages of water softening. In water systems, a delicate balance of carbon dioxide must be maintained to prevent either corrosion or incrustation of pipes and storage tanks. Carbon dioxide levels can be measured quickly and safely using this kit. All right, so we've got two tests. We've got a high range and a low range. We're going to start with the littler one first. And for this one, we are going to determine if we're in the zero to 100 milligrams per liter of carbon dioxide using the small indicator vessel. So we're going to start with this one. We're going to add one drop of our phenyl phyllate, phyllate Phil, pheno, phenol, phthalathian. Ah, love science, don't you? We're going to add one drop. Here's what we're looking for. Does it turn pink? Let's find out. We added one drop. And we are going to swirl. I'm not seeing it turn pink. It says if the solution is pink or red, then record as zero milligrams per liter of carbon dioxide. If the solution remains colorless, proceed to the next step. Take our titration syringe right here. Put it into the titration solution and we are going to start doing drops and we're going to continue adding drops until the solution turns pink. And again, we're going to be, each drop is approximately 0.3 milliliters. So here we go. We're going to do this in twos. One, oops. Almost, I'm seeing some pink. But it's got to stay pink. Two. Three, four, five. It's getting closer. Six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. Pink. I see a little pink. Let me go two more just to get it to our desired level that we would like to have it at so we can call it as pink and not just borderline. All right, we're going to call that pink. So 12 drops. 12 drops of our titration solution. 12 drops. What color did the sample turn after you added the drop of the reagent? It was colorless. What did this mean? There was CO2 present. Did we have to move to the next step? Yes, we did. If you had to move to the next step, how many milliliters? Well, we used 12 drops. 12 times 3 is 36 one hundreds 
of a milliliter. So 36 one hundredths times 100 over 1, because this has to be done in fractions, equals 3600 over 100, or 36, 36 milligrams per liter of carbon dioxide. And let's look at this again. So if we're 0 to 100, we are small. And in this, uh, we wanted to keep it, if it, the results are less than 50 milligrams, we're fine. We can actually make, it says here, if it's lower than 50, we can actually get the precision improved by doing this again with a larger sample. And we're good. We are absolutely, positively fabulous with this. So we're just going to leave this as it is. And again, if generally they contain less than 10 milligrams. So ours has 36. Now I could have stopped that at 30. But again, we were a little bit higher in the carbon dioxide. Where is the carbon dioxide coming from? OK, that's a question. For us here in southeastern New Mexico, we have oil and natural gas, which is one of the primary industries of our region. For those of you that are not aware, New Mexico is one of the top 10 states for oil and natural gas production in the United States. So the first thought that comes to my mind, carbon dioxide, CO2 production, is a byproduct of the natural gas industry. Believe it or not, it is, as well as helium, from what I understand. So it is possible that our carbon dioxide could be a naturally occurring element which is happening as a result of natural gas and petroleum in the soil and we're getting some of that coming up through the soil and merging with the water table. Is that what's happening? I don't know. Could it be a function, just a function of the well churning up everything as it's lifting the water up? and we're getting something adding it in the soil? I don't know again. But we do have a little bit of carbon dioxide present. Not enough to worry about. It would be, uh, we do know that we have a very high level of oxygen. So possibly we have some kind of maybe organic matter that's in the well casings of the irrigation well. Maybe something's contributing a little bit of carbon dioxide that way. We don't know we possibly will never know. But when we get right down to it and we look at our lab report form here, we find that there is nothing in this water sample uh, other than it being very hard water that tells us that this water sample is unsafe for human consumption. Um, we did not test it for bacteria. We did not test it for E. coli. Although a high carbon dioxide level and a low oxygen level are a prime indicator of E. coli, because E. coli is a living organism. So whether we would drink this or not, I don't know. I understand that my student drinks out of this well quite regularly. It is a protected well because it's you know isolated, has never been flooded or had anything contaminated put into it. Uh, it is on the west side of our aquifer. Here in southeastern New Mexico, the closer you get to the Pecos River, the more contaminated the water table is with the salt water of the Pecos River. And the salt in the Pecos River is naturally occurring as it goes through the gypsum deposits of our area. So all in all, our water sample checks out quite nicely. It's a little on the hard side, so you might, if you would take a shower with it, you might not get a lot of lather. But other than that, nothing that indicates that this is toxic or harmful to plants or animals. And we hope you've enjoyed taking part in this water lab. If you are making up this water lab because you missed it, uh, please make sure that you're filling out your lab sheet and make sure and turn it in so it'll get graded. Bye.